Welcome to an unusual composites tip video from the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. In this tip, we're going to use a toy from childhood to help stop a leak in a vacuum bag. Originally, I had intended this video to be a test about the infusion flow rate between the green flow media and the blue flow media. You can probably see the two valves over on the left side on the input line. Well, one of those valves goes to the output line kind of short-circuiting the layup. In other words, pulling a vacuum on both the input and the output. And eventually I will make a video about that. But it turned out that during my vacuum test, I found out that there was somewhere a very, very slow leak and I just could not locate it. So I decided, well, what the heck, we'll just go ahead and run this and see what happens. Now initially the flow rate was way too high and so I had to uh, cut back the flow rate a little bit. Now, as you can see, the blue side started out pretty fast compared to the green side. And that's because I made a little bit of a mistake. And just a small portion of that blue flow media was underneath my spiral tubing, whereas the green side, none of it was underneath the spiral tubing. So I kind of made a mistake there. And that let the epoxy flow much faster into the blue side. So that kind of completely screwed up my intention of testing the green and blue flow media. By side again, just eh, let's go ahead and just let it run. Maybe I'll learn something new from this test. I noticed that there were some air bubbles starting to come into the epoxy on the blue side. And so I started trying to figure out where in the world those air bubbles were come from. This must be the leak that I had detected when I was doing my leak test. And it's kind of hard to figure out because the bubbles were coming out over a fairly wide front. Right there where I put that mark is where the most of the bubbles are coming through. Now those bubbles can run quite easily through crimps and crevices in the vacuum bag. And so I'm trying to find out if there are any little bubbles I can see flowing through those crevices. And I'm just not seeing any. So I do quite a bit of examination trying to figure out where in the world these bubbles are originating. Now the most likely spot would be right around where the inlet tube goes through the vacuum bag and I've got that tacky tape wrapped around that inlet tube to seal off any leaks that might come in. I neglected to mention that there had been a fair amount of time from when I did my initial vacuum test and realized there was leak until I actually started doing this infusion. Now at Oshkosh this year, 2019, at a composites workshop I learned about the possibility of using Play-Doh to help stop vacuum leaks. Now, I thought that was kind of interesting. There wasn't anything more said about it. But I thought, you know what? I know I've got a vacuum leak. I can't locate it. I'll order some Play-Doh and we'll give it a try. And so that's what we're going to do here. You can't really see it very well, but off to the left side, I bought a two pound bucket of Play-Doh and I'm going to start putting some Play-Doh on here to start with in the places where I think it's the most likely that we have the leak. And of course, as I mentioned, that is right around where the suction tube goes through the vacuum bag. Now, as I was applying this, I noticed that the Play-Doh stuck pretty good to the tacky tape, but it does not stick at all well to the vacuum bag. And so... In order for it to work, if there's a leak in the vacuum bag itself, you kind of have to hold it down there a little bit in order for a suction to occur and pull it down tight. So I put it on there, and then after I get it on there, I then check to see if I can see bubbles flowing through the blue side of my layup. Now it looked to me like the air bubbles were still coming in from someplace. It didn't look like I had blocked it with the first application of the Play-Doh. So I decided to put some more around fairly close to where that inlet was again and see if we could get it stopped that way. My initial plan had been to roll out the Play-Doh into thin sheets and put it on, but I decided in the interest of time, I was just gonna go ahead and just plop it on finger tight and just not worry about how thick it was. Now the next most likely spot I thought I had a leak was near the pleat. I'd kind of thought that was where it was when I was doing my initial checks for the vacuum bag leak, but I just couldn't see anything here. 
So now I decided to go ahead and let's just completely cover up this pleat with Play-Doh all the way around it, clear down to the mold surface. Once again, I checked in the blue flow media to see if I could see air bubbles flowing through there. And it kind of looked like there were fewer bubbles. So then I decided, well, let's just let this test run a little bit and see what happens. Now here's a close-up of the vacuum infusion where I think you can see the bubbles flowing through the flow media. At least I'm trying to make it so you can see it. So this is what I had been looking at most of the time before I gave up and just plastered a whole bunch of the vacuum bag with Play-Doh. After watching a, just a small leak still going through that blue side of the layup, I finally decided, you know what, I'm just going to cover as much as I can on this input side and just really put it all the way around anywhere else I think it could possibly be leaking. And let's see what we can do. Well, after this big batch of Play-Doh that I put on, vacuum leak seemed to really slow down quite a bit. So I was at least pleased that there seemed to be no additional air coming into the part. Well, the next day I came in and took a look at the part. It looked like it got completely infused. I decided to pull the Play-Doh off and put it into a nice lump and put it back into the container that it came in. And we'll give it a try again in the future. Now, I'm not completely convinced that the Play-Doh did the job. I think it did, but I am going to do some more tests to try to verify it. And I was actually fairly pleased with the part. It was better than I expected it to be. In previous cases of using the blue flow media, even when I didn't have a leak, I had a hard time getting the mold side of the weave of my part to be completely filled with epoxy. And it was about 50% filled this time, so I was very pleased to, that I got a much better part than I had in the past. I don't have a good explanation for why the part was better this time, other than I did do something different than I had done on my other experiments. And I mentioned it earlier in the video. I put an extra line from the input line to the output line so I could put vacuum on both ports on the part. Now that pulled a lot of resin out from the input side when I pulled that vacuum on that side. So perhaps that helped a little bit. I don't know. I'm going to have to do a little more experimenting to figure that out. That's my first experience using Play-Doh to try to stop a vacuum leak. As I said, I'm not completely convinced that it worked. I'm going to use it a few more times before I pass judgment on it, whether I really think it works well or not. Now, I am curious how any of you use Play-Doh to try to stop vacuum leaks. If you have, I'd be very interested to hear what your experience was. Put a comment down in the comment section for this video. For any of you that haven't used Play-Doh but might be interested in giving it a try, I'll put an affiliate link down in the description that you can click on to get some. I got a few more videos in the pipeline that are composite tips about tips that I learned while I was at Oshkosh 2019. They'll be coming up in the near future.